Okay, everyone, we'll get. Don't think this one. We'll get started in just a moment. Okay. Uh, so uh, we've got we're on a time, so we're going to run, try and run as close as we can to time. I've got one request, please. There's quite a few of you sitting in the back section, but there's quite a lot of seats close to the front, which don't look great on the video. So if one or two of you would like to come. <laughs> Empty seats, you know. One or two of you would be willing to come and sit in some of the front bank, that would be super. And then I'm going to hand over to Sarah, who's going to uh, run the VT.
It's lovely watching that uh, video and seeing the faces in the room of people who have previously won. Isn't that marvellous? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, William Kilbride and I'm the director of the DPC and it's my pleasure to welcome you uh, to our awards ceremony tonight. I won't keep you very long. One or two little uh, bits and pieces uh, of housekeeping uh, before we get uh, underway. So firstly, uh, normally at this moment in a conference or a, or a presentation, someone's going to stand up and tell you to put your mobile phone uh, off. That's not my intention right now. I want you to turn your phone on because we want to tell a story, okay? Your job tonight is to raise the roof, <laughs> if you can do that metaphorically on Twitter, to celebrate, to celebrate the great work that's going to be presented uh, in the next uh, 70 minutes uh, or so. It occurs to me that we are at a peer-reviewed conference. The papers, the posters, uh, the panels, all that you have heard, all you have participated in up till now and are going to enjoy and learn from over the next two or three days have all been through deep scrutiny by peers to check and to test and to improve that work. Let me reassure you that what you're going to hear today has been the most scrutinised set of presentations into the digital preservation community of the last uh, two years. We're going to hear about the judging, we're going to hear a little bit about the judging uh, process. And what we're going to look at tonight uh, are a series of impressive, uh, really striking case studies of emerging and developing good practice in digital preservation. And it's a story we want to tell. It's a story we want to tell, partly because if we don't tell it, who will? If we don't do that now, when will we do it? We do the Digital Preservation Awards for the purposes of advocacy. And you are all our agents in that advocacy. So for every clap and for every, for every cheer that goes up, it goes up for us, for all of us, not simply for the winners and the finalists. Although I'm sure you'll agree, as we come to them, they very much uh, deserve that. In terms of our running order now, though, it's time for us to get uh, our programme underway. And it's my very great pleasure uh, to introduce and to welcome uh, to the stage and to welcome you all properly uh, on behalf of the DPC, uh, Juan Bicaregui, my, my boss and my friend, uh, who will uh, welcome you properly on behalf of the executive board of the DPC. Thanks William. Thanks, William, as ever. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and uh, welcome. Welcome on behalf of the Digital Preservation Coalition. Welcome to these Digital Preservation Awards. It's fantastic being here alongside IPRES, that DPC is hosting IPRES, that IPRES is here cele almost celebrating its 20th anniversary now. I think it's probably the 18th. Uh, that's coming of age for IPRES and 20 for DPC. So, you know, this is a, a big moment and uh, these awards um, are kind of showing how great things are. I think we're expecting 450 people to come through to that, through here in physical, plus of course lots more online. So this shows the momentum, this shows the way things are going. Um, it's not just about numbers, it's about variety. Um, DPC now has got all sorts of members. Um, it's got international memory organizations, national memory organizations, global corporations, We've got research institutions, higher education institutions, investors, funding bodies, etc. All these different types of organizations make up the 130 or so members of DPC. And that's two decades for you. It's grown from over two decades for being something relatively small to something big. And in this diversity, I think we've got an amazing uh, variety of talents. And DPC, of course, is about sharing. It's about sharing best practice, sharing knowledge, sharing experience. The more members we've got, the more active that sharing can be and the more exciting it is and the more we learn from each other. So hopefully these next few days, it's a great opportunity for, for us to learn from each other. Um, of course, we're here, we've just had a change of monarch in the UK, uh, condolences to the Queen's family. Um, and at times like this, you think about permanence and change. I you may have seen William's um, note a couple of days ago about signs and rituals and uh, I was watching the Privy Council meeting um, I um, think it was probably on Saturday um, and that was a really intriguing mix of the way that the old and the new interact 
some things from many centuries ago, some new things all interacting, and it makes you think about what is it that sort of distinguishes the future from the past? What is it about change? What, throughout all these periods of change, when something momentous like that happens, what stays constant and what changes? I was thinking a little bit about that. Um, of course, when an individual passes, any individual, you lose that person's individual memory. Um, in the case of the recent passing of Queen Elizabeth, that's seven decades of memory of international and national events. That's quite a big loss. On the other hand, the organization continues. The monarchy, or whichever organization, maybe your organizations, or people come, people go, organization continues. So what is it about an organizational's mem organization's memory that outlasts the individual? Obviously, the organization is the individuals, and all the individual memories of those individual people in the organization form the organization's memory. But also, the organizational memory is about the artifacts, the files, the documents, the um, processes and procedures that that organization has. And there, whether they be physical or digital, is the other half of what makes an organization, be it the monarchy or be it a uh, company. Um, so, thinking about that and thinking about change and what distinguishes the future from the past, kind of it's come to think that, well, the past is something we can see, but we can't change. The future is something we can't see, but at least we can seem to change it. So we have to think about that balance. My physics colleagues tell me that this is called time asymmetry, and it's actually one of the unknown things in physics about what's the difference between moving forwards in time and moving backwards in time. And it's a contested area, but some people say the only reason there's a time asymmetry, the only reason why the future is different from the past is because we're so near the Big Bang. The Big Bang was not even 14 billion years ago. <laughs> and, and it's our proximity to the Big Bang that makes this asymmetry. At some point in the future, in umpteen trillions of years' time, time asymmetry will be gone. And the future will be exactly the same as the past in perfect symmetry. Anyway, that's something to think about. Um, <laughs> until then, <laughs> until that time when the future and the past are symmetric, I think we've got a job to do with digital preservation so that we can learn from the past and move forward. Anyway, I'll leave you with that thought and I'll pass the uh, lecture on to Karen Williamson from Aberdeen, our, our main sponsor, to continue the introduction. Good evening, everybody. Um, on behalf of Aberdeen and all the other sponsors, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Digital Preservation Awards here in Glasgow. Aberdeen is one of the first financial institutions to embark on an open source digital preservation workflow, using processes and tools to preserve and store our digital records whilst continuing to monitor, monitor our environmental impact. As the archivist leading on this work, I can quite safely say that it wouldn't have been possible without the help and support of so many digital preservationists across the country and indeed the world. So many people have generously shared their time, knowledge and experience, all of which has been invaluable to us as an organisation at the start of their digital preservation journey. Digital Preservation Awards are a fantastic celebration of innovation and hard work and Aberdeen are delighted to sponsor the awards to help highlight the achievements for all involved. Thank you for having me here this evening, and I hope you'll all enjoy the evening and leave inspired, as I'm sure I'm going to. Thank you. Okay, so we have a couple of items of business uh, to get to before we get to the awards themselves. Uh, and my next uh, invitation uh, to speak to you tonight is to introduce Neil Jeffries, uh, who is the chair of the judges. Neil. Good evening, everybody. Good to see you all here. Um, so this is the 10th round of the awards and it's good to be back together again in person doing a little bit of the judging and actually to see everybody in person and to be able to give the awards in person. Um, I was part of the process um, last year and I can say this is much nicer, much more preferable. And we are here as part of iPrayers as 
at the start, at start of that conference, and it is the international conference for digital preservation. And digital preservation really is a global endeavor. Increasingly, everybody across the world is leaving some sort of a digital footprint, uh, and we are living, um, to take a Chinese term, in interesting times. There are many interesting things happening globally, internationally, and nationally, which are going to leave significant um, digital markers, um, which will need to be preserved in the future. So. The achievements we're going to celebrate here are very much international, um, and the endeavors that carry on and that we hope to uh, develop at conferences like IPRES are also international. So, um, Juan has already mentioned this is the 20th anniversary year um, of the DPC and the 10th round of the awards since they're held every two years. Uh, and so this is a bit of a special year. Um, so this year we have eight awards, seven which celebrate really what's been going on in the past couple of years, and then one special 20th anniversary award. Um, and they're up there um, we've, with their sponsors. So we've got the International Council on Archives Award for collaboration and cooperation, the Software Sustainability Institute Award for research and innovation, um, the Dutch Digital Heritage Network Award for teaching communications, the Award for Safeguarding the Digital Legacy, um, National Archives Award, UK Award for the Most Distinguished Student Work, the RDA, Research Data Alliance Award for the Most Outstanding Digital Preservation Initiative in Commerce, Industry and the Third Sector, and finally the DPC 20th Anniversary Award. Um, and this, this also sees the return of the DPC Fellowship, which you saw um, highlighted on the, the slideshow at the beginning of this um, to represent, to recognize an outstanding personal contribution to digital preservation. And this year there are actually multiple fellowship awards since it's a special year. These awards have been, exist to raise awareness about important work and to celebrate, as has been mentioned several times, um, the achievements which are too often overlooked really in many other business areas. Prizes consist of a trophy, a cash prize, and a framed certificate. And I'd like to welcome all the finalists here tonight, um, their colleagues, their friends, and they do not know whether they have won or not. Um, what are we celebrating? As I've said, most of them, cases, we're celebrating really stuff that's happened in the past two years, since the last awards, give or take. Um, but for the 20th anniversary award, we're really looking at everything the whole contribution, everything that's happened um, since the beginning, so the last 20 years. We are here to celebrate really all the finalists and everybody who's been nominated. You've all done interesting things. You've all done stuff we would, we would like to hear more about. Um, so we're celebrating all of you in some way while we're here. Um, and all the finalists will receive a certificate as well coming out of this. Uh, part of this process is, as well as the panel of judges, a DPC member vote. Um, and we have comments um, which we can feed back to finalists um, which come from the, the members from across the community. Um, and that shows some sort of the high regard that they're held in by um, the, the DPC community at large. Um, perhaps the biggest prize really is the recognition um, for people, not, not the tokens that we give out, um, but partly the recognition within the community, but also in some cases within their organization to help promote digital preservation, to show that they are doing useful things and can actually make progress and advance the field as a whole. None of this would be pos possible without the generous dedication of time and expertise of our panel judges. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these people here, um, um, but thank you very much. Um, many of them are here tonight. Many of them will be helping to hand out the awards um, after I've finished my talking. Um, the panel itself is a fascinating group. It behaves unlike any other committee I've been on. In fact, the whole process is um, somewhat um, interesting, novel. We, I mean, we get to see um, close up all sorts of interesting things that come through the door. Um, because we have no control over the nomination process. There's all, all sorts of fascinating things coming on, and the diversity there in terms of the content, the approaches and things we're seeing is really unlike, I think, most other fields you come into. Uh, and that makes the decision process really quite difficult, um, because it's very hard to compare these things 
come up. It means there's an awful lot of lively debate. There's a back and lot of back and forth, a lot of bartering. Um, but at the end of this, we do come to a decision and agreement. There's not too many fights or anything like that. We're all friends at the end of it. Um, as chair of the judge, I have to make sure that um, things are conducted appropriately, um, that there are no conflicts of interest, um, that everything behaves, everybody behaves well, and that everything is recorded uh, so that we know clearly what the decisions are made and we can start to actually run the award like this. It is my pleasure to confirm that this process went pretty smoothly this year. <laughs> Thanks also then to our sponsors, many of whom are represented here tonight, many of whom um, helped with the judging, um, but their generous contribution supports the prizes for each of the categories and means we can actually be here doing this tonight. So it's great to see so many people here tonight. Special welcome to all the guests and all the people watching remotely. Hello out there. Um, and thank you for joining us in this celebration. Um, please do congratulate all the finalists as we go through them for their work. Um, as William said, um, tweet, blog, write congratulatory details, get the message out there. Digital pre preservation is marvellous. Thank you very much. I'll hand back to William for the rest of the process. So to business then. <laughs> it's my great pleasure to invite up onto the stage uh, to present our first set of awards tonight. Our first award tonight, which is the uh, ICA Award for Collaboration and Cooperation. It's a great pleasure to introduce uh, on stage uh, Meg Phillips, uh, representing the ICA, and Neil Grindley. The Award for Collaboration and Cooperation, celebrating significant collaboration across institutional, professional, sectoral, geographical boundaries, which have had a demonstrable and positive impact on digital preservation. There are two finalists for this award. Kickstart Cymru, Enhancing Digital Preservation Capacity in Wales, this initiative builds on the work that has been undertaken in Wales to preserve and provide access to digital information now and in the future. Underpinned by the Digital Preservation Policy for Wales, it is a multi-stranded initiative involving archivists, researchers, consultants, students, and IT professionals to promote digital preservation in the local authority, education, and cultural sectors. Finals number two. Archiver, Archiving and Preservation for Research Environments. This initiative is a collaborative approach to procuring digital preservation services, supporting the IT requirements of European scientists and providing cost-effective end-to-end archival and preservation services for high-value data sets within the context of scientific research projects. My fellow judges and I were very impressed with both of these finalists and indeed with all the, all the nominees. The finalists are really different from each other, but both of them are demonstrating types of collaboration that will be really important for the digital preservation community going forward. So I invite you all to join me in congratulating both finalists and all the nominees in the collaboration and cooperation category. And with that, I turn it over to Neil to do the honors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Meg. So I've got the apparently simple, but nonetheless very exciting task of revealing the winner in this category. So let's see if I can, how difficult I can make this. <coughs> so um, I have the, I'm delighted to announce that the winner for the collaboration and cooperation category is Archiver. Archiving Preservation for Research Environments. Would you like to come down and receive your prize?
Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, so uh, thank you very much for this recognition. I have to say I didn't prepare a speech, but um, I'm very happy, very emo emotional now. Um, so this has been a, a long journey since 2019. So the world changed a little bit since 2019, as you probably can, uh, can see. Um, and then, yes, I think we embodied the spirit of international cooperation and collaboration because we had multiple science represented, represented. We had multiple regions, Europe and UK, and we had the, the public sector and the private sector to produce very extraordinary services by the end of the project. So I thank you very much, and thank you very much, DEC, for the, for the funding. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is a truly cooperative uh, effort. Uh, I want to thank both the, the organizers, uh, CERN, representing the, the project, and also my colleagues, without their help and the, the, the extraordinary work that they performed, could have been uh, impossible to reach this one. And taking on the metaphor of the time symmetry in digital preservation, we take from the past, but we always look into the future. Thank you. Of course, I'd also like to say thank you hugely to the digital preservation community for raising preservation as an issue, without which Archiver wouldn't have happened. And I'd like to say thank you to my colleagues at Archiver, um, without whom um, Archiver wouldn't have been a success for us. Thank you. Okay, on to our next. Uh, item of business. It's my very great pleasure to invite on to stage presenting the Software Sustainability Institute uh, Award for Research uh, and Innovation, uh, Neil uh, Chu Hong and Kirsty Langstadt. Thank you, William. As someone who's uh, born, raised, and working in Scotland, it's my great pleasure that the Digital Preservation Awards are here in Glasgow and to see, well, sort of be able to see all your lovely faces. Um, the Research and Innovation Award recognizes excellence in practical research and innovation activities, and there are three finalists for this award. The first finalist, the effective preservation of archaeological virtual reconstructions. This PhD program showed that archaeological virtual reconstructions are a blend of artistic and scientific creativity. These hybrid digital objects require delicate care to be preserved effectively in the long term. In addressing these issues, this thesis presents a preservation framework for how those various sectors fit together. The second finalist, enabling DNA as a digital preservation medium. DNA is the ultimate preservation medium developed by nature to preserve the code of every organism on Earth. Twist Bioscience is developing a way to harness the benefits of DNA for digital data storage, and this solution has already been used in digital preservation projects around the world. And finally, the third finalist, enriching, empowering, and future-proofing, the benefits of linked open data for archives. This study used documentary analysis to construct a comprehensive and cohesive narrative of the benefits of linked data for the archive sector. Providing a timely and robust evidence base of the benefits of linked data, the study also identifies barriers created by current practices which prevent the archive sector from fully experiencing these benefits. As with all of the categories uh, you'll hear about today, it was a really difficult decision that the judges had to take. Um, all three of the finalists, all of the submissions were of such high quality that um, I don't know how we came to a decision, but I would like to, uh, you all to show your appreciation for all of the nominees, um, all of the finalists, and all the people from this category. Please give a round of applause. And now I'm going to hand over to Kirsty with her golden envelope.
Yes, I have to say it was a great fun looking at these and it's lovely to welcome you all here to Glasgow as a fellow Scot and I'm delighted to be able to open the golden envelope and today's winner is the effective preservation of archaeological virtual reconstructions. Please come forward. Thank you all so much. I want to thank my mom. No. <laughs> uh, I want to thank my supervisor team, uh, my external examiner, Professor William Kilbright, and all the predecessors in the field who paved the way. I've seen a lot of faces here that uh, I've referenced in my thesis. So that makes me extra proud. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, our next category uh, tonight uh, is the, uh, sponsored by the Dutch uh, Digital Heritage Network and it is the award for teaching and communication. So it gives me a great pleasure to invite uh, onto stage uh, Roxana Maurer of the uh, Bibliothèque Nationale de Luxembourg uh, and Remco van Wienendal of the National Archives of the Netherlands. Hi everyone. Are you more comfortable with me sitting down like, <laughs> like I'm in front of a screen? No. Um, the award for teaching and communication um, recognizes excellence in training, advocacy and uh, outreach. There are three finalists in this category. The first is learning through doing, building digital preservation skills in Wales. This training program provides a general and practical introduction to digital preservation principles and practices for those in the cultural, educational, and public sectors in Wales. Throughout the program and interactive engagement with institutions across Wales, considerable digital preservation knowledge and skills have been shared and developed. Second, Managing Digital Archives, the online di uh, learning course from the International Council of Archives. Managing Digital Archives is a self-paced course um, which provides a thorough grounding in digital archive and preservation for a global audience. Using flexible learning options to support international participants, it emphasizes approaches to maximize limited resources and encourages learners to join and contribute to the international digital archives and preservation community. Third, professional archives and records education for the 21st century. Following a revision of Aberystwyth University's Master of Arts in Archives and Records Management in 2020, digital preservation is repositioned as a core subject rather than an optional one. The revised curriculum ensures that students qualifying from the Archives and Records Association accredited program are now equipped to manage digital material from the start of their careers. Well, about 20 years ago, closer to the start of my personal career, I was a technologist and lecturer in a, digit, uh, in a uh, technology innovation center in Birmingham, in fact. So you can imagine that it is a great honor for me to be standing here in a uh, technology and Innovation Center uh, presenting an award for teaching and communication, especially about teaching. So we as judges, to keep to the terminology, scored uh, the finalists or the nominations, we interviewed the finalists and we discussed all the scores. Then, before we announce the winner, please uh, share your appreciation for all the finalists.
And now, it is my honor to announce the winner, and I have to say I'm probably way more nervous than the winners because they don't know they have won yet. <laughs> and the winner of the Digital Preservation Award for Teaching and Communications is Learning Through Doing, Building Digital Preservation Skills in Wales. Thank you very much. Well, I remember when William used to describe the DPC as a small, somewhat secretive organisation. <laughs> Look at it now. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to my colleagues, thank you to everyone to Wales, thank you to you. This means a lot to me. It's something that I've, I've wanted for a long time, so it really does mean a lot to me. And thank you to Sarah, who's going to say a few words as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, thank you, everybody, and thank you, Sally, for incorporating the course into your your initiatives so that the students could actually learn from the wider initiatives that are going on in Wales. So thank you. Thank you. We're making good progress uh, through these. So uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce our next uh, award, which is award for safeguarding uh, the digital uh, legacy. And it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, from the National Library of Ireland, Kieran O'Leary, and the UN High Commission for Refugees, Patricia Sleeman, to present the trophy. Um, the Safeguarding the Digital Legacy Award recognizes and commends the practical application of digital preservation tools to protect at-risk digital objects. There are three finalists for this award. Archiving Reproductive Health, funded by Wellcome and administered by the Digital Repository of Ireland. This project publishes and makes available at-risk born digital content generated by grassroots women's reproductive health movements before and during the campaign to repeal the Eighth Amendment of the Irish Constitution that otherwise would be lost. Secondly, uh, legacies of Stephen Duoskin's personal cinema, The Digital and Archival Legacy. The diverse legacy of the late experimental filmmaker Stephen Duoskin spans digital and analogue, personal and professional, through image, text, moving images and sound. The preservation project has created new knowledge in film and cultural studies, digital forensics and data analysis, and builds up the capacity of local digital archives. Finally, Preserving and sharing the Jeremy Sutton Hibbert photographic collection. Jeremy Sutton Hibbert's work has appeared in magazines around the world, covering topics including reportage of Scotland, international affairs, the arts, politics, the environment and sports. This project to preserve Jeremy's work ensures the ongoing accessibility of a visual document of Scottish and global cultures across an era of rapid technological change. Um, as a winner of this award myself in 2018, and I still have the pin that William Kilbride put on my lapel back then. Uh, I know how incredible it feels to have your work recognized by the community through the awards. It actually has a really profound effect. Um, it's such an important way of helping to spread the message about digital preservation within organizations and more broadly. So I'm gonna hand it over to Patricia to reveal which of these fantastic projects has won the award, but let's all give a big hand for all three. And it's my very great pleasure to announce the winner. The winner of the Digital Preservation Award for Safeguarding the Digital Legacy is Archiving Reproductive Health.
don't have anything prepared, didn't expect to win at all, so I'm really, really pleased. Um, um, I just want to thank the rest of our team, our PIs, Dr. Aileen O'Carroll, Dr. Natalie Harrower, Dr. Catherine Cassidy, our, uh, our software engineer, Preetam Singhvi, who was supposed to come but wasn't able to make it, my colleague Lorraine Grimes here, and uh, also my colleagues Lisa Griffith and Kevin Long, and everybody has come together to make this a really great project so far. But most of all, I want to thank the um, activists and volunteer groups who have worked with us and so kindly shared it with their very important and valuable data with us and to all the people who worked over so many years to make this change in, in Irish society. Thank you very much. <laughs>
well, as you might have noticed, uh, you get a job with it. So um, <laughs> I can really recommend it. So enjoy, enjoy the coming years, um, being the winner of the 2022. So without further ado, the winner of the Most Distinguished Student Award is Sasha Arden with access to artistic content on CD-ROMs. <laughs> Many of you in this room will know I'm not Sasha. Uh, I'm Professor Sarah Cook, I'm from the University of Glasgow, but I also hold a research fellowship at Tate. Um, Sasha is a student who has been at NYU, as you saw on the screen, working on holdings at the Tate in the conservation care department with Pip Lawrenson. Um, Professor Pip Lawrenson and I have been working very closely together, and the CD-ROMs that Sasha was looking at were CD-ROMs very relevant to the research work we were doing around the history of British digital and media artists whose works are a bit loose in the collection. Are they in the library? Are they in the collection? So this work on CD-ROMs was hugely important. Sasha, unfortunately, can't be here. They're in New York, or perhaps I'm wearing my New York scarf, um, or in California, which is their spiritual home. Um, <laughs> and they are about to undertake a fellowship at the Guggenheim. So please thank me in celebrating Sasha's work, which is really a wonderful thing. And thank you very much for this award. <laughs> Our next category this evening is the award sponsored by the Research Data Alliance, uh, the award for commerce, uh, industry and the third sector. And it's my pleasure to introduce, to present the award on behalf of the RDA Connie Clare uh, and also uh, Karen Sampson of Lloyds Bank. Thank you. Thank you, William. Um, great to be here, everybody. I don't feel very well travelled, actually, because I live in England, and it's my first time in Glasgow, too. <laughs> so that's, that's great. So well, I'll get started. Um, the award for the most outstanding digital preservation initiative in commerce, industry, and the third sector encourages and recognises the adoption of digital preservation tools and approaches in an organisation that is not explicitly a memory institution. And there are three finalists for this award. The first one, National Centre for Truth and Reconciliation Digital Preservation Programme. Through this programme, the National Centre for Truth and Reconciliation has created a digital infrastructure and work plan for the preservation of its digital holdings to make materials meaningfully available to Indigenous communities in support of the rights and dignity of indigenous peoples. The second finalist, long-term preservation of digital health records. This health records repository project is part of Sao Joao University Hospital Center's digital transformation strategy, promoting change in the management of daily medical records through the implementation of procedures for preparation, digitization, and preservation of health records. And this results um, in a higher efficiency in the access and reuse of clinical information in the context of healthcare. And the final, the final nominee, Mahu San Miguel, preserving the legacy of the leading Spanish brewery company. This initiative by Mahu San Miguel has built the company's historical archive to contain more than 6,000 digitised negatives from the 19th and early 20th century, as well as one of the most important single-author photography collections from the 19th century in Europe, Almeso. The work has also been nominated for a Spanish national award for the restoration and curation of cultural assets. So 
So I'm really delighted to be here today on behalf of the Research Data Alliance, sponsor of this wonderful award. I'm here in place of the Secretary General, Hilary Hannahoe, who was one of the judges of this category. And it's a genuine surprise for me today. I have absolutely no idea who has won this award. But what I do know is that Hilary was really amazed at the innovation and quality of the nominations. Each of these projects clearly demonstrates an undeniable contribution to and impact on society. So please do join me in a round of applause. And without further ado, I'd like to pass on to Karen, who is going to announce the winner. Thanks, Connie. And um, I'm delighted to announce that the winner is... National Centre for Truth and Reconciliation Digital Preservation Programme. so much for this award. I'll start by thanking the Digital Preservation Coalition for this opportunity for us to stand here. I also thank my colleague who have been working tirelessly back home in Canada to ensure that the voice of indigenous people of Canada have been heard. Thank you so much. Uh, we dedicate this award to the survivors of residential school who were not able to make it back home for the atrocities which they bear for the sake of indigenous people of Canada. Thank you so much for this award. So ladies and gentlemen, we move on now to one of our special category awards uh, marking 20 years of the DPC. Uh, and so it's my very great pleasure to, uh, the DPC specifically sponsors uh, this award. And so it's therefore my great pleasure to welcome, on behalf of the DPC Executive Board, uh, our Vice Chair, uh, Kevin Ashley. And I think I'm saying right saying there, our newest board member, that's to say, uh, also uh, Edith Halverson. Kevin and Edith. Thanks for that introduction, William, and uh, it's a great pleasure and honour uh, to be here to present, in a sense, not just any award, but as uh, William said, a special award commemorating the DPC's 20th anniversary. The 20th anniversary award is intended to celebrate a contribution to the digital preservation community that is continuing, that is substantial, substantial and that has impact uh, over many years. There are three finalists for the award, and I think it's clear that all of them in their different ways have elements uh, of community engagement and collaboration that demonstrate how they satisfy those criteria for this award. So, the first finalist, the Premised Data Dictionary and Related Resources. Premise is the de facto standard for preservation metadata. Its data dictionary provides a description of core information about digital objects um, to implement premise, to understand digital preservation processes and to benchmark solutions. Over the past 20 years, premise has established itself as an active global community. Our second finalist, the Federal Agency's Digital Guidelines Initiative, or FAGI as I believe it's more commonly known. Uh, the sustained impact of these guidelines on the digital preservation landscape is significant. It includes free and open access to its World Research Guidelines and support for open source tools for their implementation. This body of work covers the prominent star rating imaging guidelines, embedded metadata guidelines and tools, file format research and so much more. Our third finalist, the Pronom Technical Registry. This has been hosted 
by the UK National Archives for 20 years. It's an open source community initiative with institutions across the globe making their contributions. It's a file format registry created to support preservation planning for digital records, collecting key data about file formats used uh, to, for the ident purposes of identification and reference. And it was made publicly available in 2005 and this year released its 100th update. So before we go to the announcement uh, of the, uh, the winner, uh, which again is going to be a surprise to me, I was not involved uh, in the judging this time. But I have uh, had the honour to be involved in the judging of digital preservation boards in the past. And I'll certainly go back to what Neil Jeffries said at the beginning. It's a really fun process to be involved with, although it's also hard work. If any of you get the call to be involved in the judging of the awards in future, say yes. You won't regret it. But before we make that announcement, let's please applaud the judges uh, for their hard work and their fun and all the three worthy finalists. Thank you. So I've been carrying around this envelope for quite a while this afternoon and I'm dying to find out what's inside. So I'm not going to keep myself or you waiting any longer. I can reveal that the winner of the DPC 20th Anniversary Award is... <laughs> the Premise Data Dictionary and Related Resources. I want to thank all of you for giving us this award. The judges, you have done a terrific work. Uh, we are the glue who keeps everything together, as I used to say. And what you actually saw here is the premise editorial committee. We have so far been 41 people, part of the editorial committee. And we have a big thank you to our parent organizations, our employers who actually aid us in doing this work together with you, the community, which we wouldn't exist if we didn't have. So long live digital preservation and congratulations to DPC of achieving the same number of years as us. <laughs> Thank you. And please note that uh, we have done our best to get all the images of the faces here because all of these people has contributed. But you are also presented. The community is also a great resource for this work. So thank you to you as well. And, yeah. Okay, we're almost, almost done. Here's the thing you don't notice if you're in the seats, but you notice if you're standing here, which is that we've managed to get the room completely kitted out in DPC green. Uh, the seats are all green. This is uh, attention to detail, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so it's my great pleasure to move us on now to our final uh, uh, presentation uh, tonight, uh, which uh, it will be a pleasure to introduce our new DPC fellows uh, at the awards ceremony tonight. And in order to make that presentation, it's our great pleasure to uh, welcome back to this stage, uh, at least conceptually this stage, our two previous fellows, uh, Mickey Lindlar, DPC fellow from 2020, 
And Mickey, you never got a round of applause properly for that because you were one of the little faces on that slide that we saw at the start. So maybe we could make sure Mickey gets that round of applause. Yeah. Uh, and also our DPC fellow from 2018, uh, Barbara Searman. So I think we should give Barbara a round of applause as well as they come forward. Thank you, uh, William. Thank you, everyone. So the final award is a very special award. All other awards so far um, have been to commemorate uh, an organization or a project or an initiative which of course people are behind and we hear many times that digital preservation is people and some people really go above and beyond to contribute to digital preservation and the DPC Fellowship Award is there to commemorate exactly that. It is a category which recognizes an outstanding and sustained personal contribution to digital preservation. As we already heard today to mark the 20th anniversary, not one, not two, not three, not four, but actually five Digital Preservation Fellowship Awards are awarded tonight. And we should actually note here that some of the fellows who will be awarded this have also been active for longer than 20 years in digital preservation, so much longer than the DPC, and some have retired and in their retirement continue to contribute. The award is giving to individuals recognizing a sustained and impactful contribution to the digital preservation community, demonstrating leadership and innovation over an extended period, sharing their insights generously and engaging collaboratively for the widest possible benefit. About the process, nominations for the fellowship were invited from the DPC membership and were reviewed by the judges. The judges say that collectively our fellows this year have been instrumental in leading digital preservation efforts in their respective part of the world within their various specifications. They have established networks and communities like IPRESS, which 18th instance of we're attending this week. They have created courses, resources, models, concepts and practices that we all take for granted today and use in our daily work. And they have done all of this above and beyond their day jobs with enthusiasm, generosity, and passion. The fellowship is a very special award recognizing the outstanding personal contributions these individuals have made. So now Barbara will announce this year's DPC Fellows. Yes, via the golden envelope and five names fit in this envelope, I think. Yes, they do. Um, the first fellow is Neil Bigri. <laughs> the second fellow is Adrian Brown. The third fellow is Denise de Vries. The fourth fellow is Nancy McGovern. And the fifth fellow is Professor Xiolin Zhang. Indeed, a great honour, and I'm grateful to those DPC members for nominating me. I'm heartened at the little successes that I have in my work and that I usually celebrate myself are also appreciated by others. I was lucky to have started working with computers in 1976 on a mainframe which was booted by manually setting switches in Octal to read paper tape to get it all going. Initially, we had no operating system, but later we had the George operating system. I say lucky 
because having had that start means that I gained a very good understanding of bits, encoding and formatting information. Because I work at the low level, imaging cassettes, discs of all sizes, then wrangling the bits using hex editor, discovering the encoding and formatting of artefacts, finding software to render the data into information to display art, play games, and configure emulators to execute legacy software. I love what I do in digital preservation, and I'm, impressed, and I'm also impressed by the work that other people in this field are doing in so many different ways. I work with a great team of people, and I love everything I do. The digital preservation community is small, but very collaborative, and I've formed friendships and associations with many of you. With people I've met through iPress and other conferences, UNESCO Persist, Australasia Preserves and various GLEM organisations. The digital dark age is not coming, it is the present. We are living in it and the people here at this conference are working to minimise the effect. We must continue the digital preservation battle and keep on sounding the warnings. Data for all, for good, forever. Let digits flourish. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am honoured and very pleased to accept the DPC Fellowship Award, especially during IPRES 2022, when DPC is celebrating 20 years. Couldn't be better. I recall the discussions about the founding of what became DPC within the UK community while I was at UCL at the end of the last millennia and start of this one. I remember very fondly collaborating with Neil Beagley and Maggie Jones as they started the DPC and we started the DPM workshop, swapping reviews of DPC's first handbook in our online tutorial. And of course, a nod to Anne Kenny, who had such a significant impact for me and for the digital preservation community. That was such an exciting time. More recently, I've thoroughly enjoyed working with the growing DPC team, William, Sarah, Sharon, Jen, Paul, Angela and all. Thank you very much for this award and this honor. It is a great honor for me to be awarded the DPC Fellowship Award 2022. I sincerely thank the award committee for recognizing not just me personally, but also the China Digital Preservation Program and the Chinese community for working with the world colleagues in pushing forward the digital preservation efforts. It's really a professional fulfillment and a personal fulfillment to have worked in this field and to have worked together with many of you. I'm pleased to be part of IPRIS 2004 and IPRIS 2007 and IPRIS 2020. I do regret that not being able to personally on site at IPRIS 2022, but my colleagues and I will continue to learn from the international digital preservation community and DPC and to work together to preserve our knowledge heritage for the generations to come. Thank you very much and hope you a very successful IPRIS 2022. Thank you very much for this award. It really does mean a lot to me personally. Um, some of you may know that I retired earlier this year, so this makes a very nice bookend uh, for that very long career. Um, it's a number of reasons why I particularly welcome getting it uh, here um, today. Um, one of them is obviously it's the first secretary of DPC. The DPC has always been uh, an organisation very close to my heart and which has been a, a real delight to try and support uh, 
uh, over the last 20 years. Another is that I was one of the people at the first IPRES in China. I think I did four presentations and a seminar at that. Can't imagine doing that today. Um, so it's wonderful that IPRES is here and uh, you're all in Scotland. Um, some of you may recognise also that Beagri is a Scottish name it's from Aberdeenshire, so it's always great to be back in Scotland from my point of view. I'm sure you'll all have a great time here. I hope you get the chance to go out and look around Scotland yourselves individually. It's a fantastic country and I'm sure you'll enjoy your conference and your time here. Thank you very much. Gosh, well, um, thank you so much. Um, first of all, thank you. Well, uh, let me see. Um, thank you to uh, Mickey and to, to Barbara for those extremely kind words. Um, also, I'd like to say a particular thank you to, to William and all of the DPC team for the, frankly, pretty gobsmacking double whammy of putting together not only the Digital Preservation Awards, but IPRES um, in one go, which I think is a pretty stupendous achievement. So uh, thank you so much for that. Um, Thank you, of course, to the uh, DPC judging panel um, for this um, fantastic honour. It, it is a real honour and a privilege. Um, and I guess most importantly, thank you to the DPC membership. Um, I think this is particularly special because it is an award uh, from the membership, from the community. And you know, one of the most uh, important lessons I think I've learned through my, my time working in digital preservation is, is the importance of the community and, and the generosity from which we all benefit uh, in this community. I think no matter what I've learned perhaps as the single most important lesson is that no matter what uh, we can do as individuals, it's the community which is really uh, what amplifies and refines and improves and, uh, and develops uh, that and really takes us forward uh, as, as, a, as a discipline and as a community. So this is a very special award indeed and uh, thank you so much. I think it's appropriate to have a standing ovation for all of this year's fellows, maybe, at this point in time. Thank you all very uh, much. Uh, we're coming to a close uh, in a moment, but uh, before we close, we have uh, another brief presentation from uh, one of our sponsors, uh, James Mortlock uh, of HSBC, who can't be with us tonight, unfortunately, but he's recorded uh, the following message. Good evening. I hope everyone at the DPC Awards is enjoying IPRES in their week in Glasgow. Unfortunately, the HSBC Archives team cannot be there in person this week, but many of us are virtual delegates and have been attending the remote sessions. Sadly, this has meant that I'm unable to be at the DPC Awards this evening to see the winners in person. I'd like to pass on my congratulations to all of those receiving awards tonight on behalf of HSBC and all of this year's sponsors. I am the Senior Digital Archives Manager at HSBC and have had the good fortune to be working within the digital preservation sector for the past 11 years. HSBC has had a long interest in digital preservation, beginning with the design of our own digital preservation program in 2012, launching our digital preservation system in 2015, and then going on to enhance the access to the fruits of our digital preservation labours through the history.hsbc.com website, which launched last year. Throughout this development, the DPC have offered a wealth of knowledge and support, which has helped us inform our design and policy decisions with regard to digital preservation. HSBC creates billions of digital records every year. A small proportion of these will be of historical interest and captured and preserved by the HSBC Archives team. In order to maintain long-term access to these records, intervention is required. The formats that are in use today are not the formats that will be used in the future. Access to old records is not guaranteed by future software platforms.
In 20, 50, or 100 years' time, access to the records created today cannot be assured without active preservation management. Digital preservation and digital preservationists are what ensures this continued access to authentic and consistent records. Their work, our work, deserves to be celebrated by events such as the award ceremony tonight. For this reason, HSBC is delighted to sponsor the Digital Preservation Awards and celebrates the hard work and innovation that they recognise. Congratulations once again to all of the winners and I hope everyone enjoys. That was quite a tough edit, I thought. So we're coming to the close now, so it just remains then for me to, to lead us all really in, in a word of thanks. Uh, thanks as always to the DPC team uh, who are astou astounding. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Need to get a grip of myself. Anyway, uh, for, for all their work, I want to thank the judges uh, who have had great fun, right? It's, it's hard work, but it's, it's entertaining. So, that's my phone going, can you believe? <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank the judges, especially Neil, as chair of the judges, for his uh, uh, contribution and leadership uh, of the group. Our headline sponsors, uh, Aberdeen and HSBC. I'd like to thank the sponsors of the awards, the International Council on Archives, the Software Sustainability Institute, the uh, National Archives, the, U uh, the Research Data Alliance, the National Archives of the Netherlands uh, and Sound and Vision as part of the Dutch Digital Heritage Network. I'd like to thank our DPC supporters who have contributed also, Archivum, AVP, Artifactual, Ex Libris, Iron Mountain, Libnova, Max Communications, Preservica and Twist uh, Bioscience. I'd like to thank all of the nominees who have uh, submitted uh, their work uh, to us for consideration. We have had a, a wonderful study of best practice in digital preservation and we have so much learning to share just from the judging process alone. I'd like to thank the DPC members who make this possible uh, and also for those who specifically participated in the vote uh, and made nominations uh, for the fellowship. Thank you all uh, to you for sharing uh, in this ceremony and for helping us to raise the roof. The time has come to send that email to write to your MP uh, to tell the world about the great practice and great developments there have been in digital preservation. So tweet and blog and tell the world about the great things you heard tonight on the 12th of September here in Glasgow. I'd like to ask the finalists, all the finalists and the judges uh, and the organisers, please, just to stay back for a moment uh, for a team photograph. There's always a team photo where the DPC is concerned. Uh, and in the meantime, that gives the rest of you uh, the opportunity of a head start. Uh, <laughs> a head start uh, at the, the buffet or the, the little reception that we have planned for you uh, and to celebrate and to toast therein the, all of the winners and the finalists uh, for their outstanding contributions. Thank you very much. Thank you.